Have you ever laid in bed at night thinking just how privileged your life is? You had bacon and eggs for breakfast, a turkey sub sandwich for lunch, and a steak dinner to top it all off. You know, most people, they don't even consider that their meal was once a living, breathing animal, very much like themselves. Personally, I think often, what if the tables had been turned? And instead of human beings, a more dominant species was selected in the evolutionary lottery of intelligence. What if it was our turn to be subjugated and farmed by a more intelligent, more technologically advanced species? And what if that species were, say, cows, chickens, or pigs? Would they be so merciful to us? Would they exercise the same humane treatment promised by stickers on meat packages sold at the grocery stores? I wonder. So I looked a little deeper, and I found this graphic uploaded to Reddit recently by username Hilda Morgan, and it got me thinking. What would this look like if it were human beings that were being farmed? Let's start with the pigs. People haven't yet developed a taste for the milk of pigs, and they don't lay any eggs, so we raise them exclusively for meat. Now we love to use euphemisms like bacon, pork, or ham, but these words are all just kid-friendly substitutes for pig flesh. Pigs are born and raised in captivity, and in the case of factory farms, they're hardly allowed to leave cages not much larger than themselves for their entire stay on Earth. They're fed the meat of their own species, diseased animals, feathers, hair, skin, hooves, blood, manure, drugs, chemicals, and grains for about six months, and then they're slaughtered. They get to live an average of 4.2% of their total life expectancy before they're sliced into pieces and fed to the more evolved mammals known as people. Now, if the tables were turned and we convert this equation for humans with an average lifespan of 72 years, then that would mean pigs farming people in captivity and slaughtering three-year-old children for food. How about the male cows born on a dairy farm? A lot of you may not know this, but in order to harvest cow milk, which is all over our food system and consumed by most people in the world today, this first requires a female cow to give birth, just like with humans. The cow produces that milk for its calf, but we can't very well allow the calf to drink it if we want it for ourselves, so the cow's newborn baby is taken from her and slaughtered for meat no more than five months later. This is after the calf's movement is restricted in a small tent and it's fed calf starter, an artificial growth potion of our own making, instead of its mother's milk. This keeps the meat tender and the cow babies are considered a commodity in most of human society. They're allowed to live approximately 1% of their expected time on earth before they're slaughtered for food. Again, if the tables were turned, this would mean a more intelligent species forcing a human pregnancy, then stripping the mother of her newborn baby at birth, feeding that infant in captivity for approximately 10 months with a formula, and then slaughtering the infant and selling its body at higher than average human flesh market value because of its tenderness. And here you were thinking that a vegetarian lifestyle was cruelty free. How about roosters born in a factory farm environment? You've probably seen footage of it before, but here it is again. These animals are born, and within the day, before they've even left their egg shells, they're identified as male and sent directly to a meat grinder for pet food and various other inexpensive animal products. If the tables had been turned and chickens were factory farming us, this would be equivalent to selecting newborn infants in a hospital and sending our baby boys down a meat grinding assembly line to be blended into food for pets in a chicken household. What about the lucky ones that were born female? 
They're kept in cages for one to two years, which equates to roughly 19% of their expected lifetime, and they're expected to give eggs every day of their lives whilst being immobilized and mutilated before they're slaughtered for food. It almost seems like the life of a baby rooster is preferable. So what if the tables were turned once again? Well, first, women would need to be selectively bred and engineered for many generations so that they could menstruate about once per day, and then, after 13 and a half years in captivity, they'd be slaughtered for meat. She wouldn't even graduate middle school. And how about the turkeys? These are the birds we've selected to celebrate our annual day of Thanksgiving. What better way to show your gratitude for everything you have than by eating a two-year-old child as the centerpiece of your feast? Turkeys on average get to live about 3% of their lives as they're forced to mature at a freakishly accelerated pace in captivity less than half a year before the special day. In the United States alone, 45 million turkeys have their heads and feet chopped off and their feathers plucked out to feed the population for that gracious November holiday every year. At least we show some mercy. It's a beloved tradition that the leader of our country pardons one turkey per year as restitution. What about those happy cows that are depicted on the television that are treated humanely in order to provide that refreshing glass of cool milk? Surely they get to live out their adulthood at least. Well, they get to live about 20% of their lives in service to human beings, giving everything they have, from their children to the milk they produce for them, and even their very bodies which are carved up and sold as steak once they've surpassed their productive prime. In human terms, this would mean slaughtering a girl that hasn't even completed her freshman year in high school because she'd be only 14 and a half years old. Do you feel disgusted yet? I'll keep going. There's a special breed of chicken named the broiler that has been engineered to grow larger than a regular chicken after only six weeks of maturation. Their regular life expectancy is about eight years, but they only get to live 1.4% of that lifespan before they're slaughtered for chicken tenders and nuggets. But those are the lucky ones. The unlucky ones get sacrificed by Jews in a ritual known as kaporos. These Jews first transfer their worldly sins to the animals, then they flail them about with their throats cut open in public to complete the sacrifice. I wonder if we could find a species in this wide cosmos cruel enough to use one-year-old human babies for a similar ritual. One realizes very quickly after making these lifespan conversions to help put things in perspective the degree to which humanity has conquered the earth and oppressed its denizens when the average age of an animal raised for food in our civilization represents the equivalent of a kindergartner. We've developed a taste for the adolescent children of other earthlings that we deem inferior to ourselves. If you're disgusted by this video and feel compelled to share your disgust, this is good news. It means that you are still a redeemable human being. You still have a soul. You don't have to fund the murder of these innocent babies for another day and by going vegan, you can defund the hellish industries our food choices have given rise to in the most effective way possible, right now. As a proto-vegan, you have plenty of blood on your hands, the blood of innocent babies and children in your own phylum. In the case of some mammals like pigs, we share 98% of our mammal genome. This is one step removed from cannibalism, ladies and gentlemen. Almost everyone was raised eating animal flesh, but now we know it isn't necessary. We know it isn't sustainable. And as a result of this presentation, now you know it requires the death of innocent baby earthlings, all because you like the taste and texture of their dead bodies. It's time to stop this madness, my friends. Go vegan and never look back.